Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today is another tutorial. This tutorial is how to add the Game Jolt API to your Scratch game. This has been a question I've seen a lot of people uh, ask me as well as other people on how do I connect the Game Jolt API, how do I use this add-on, because it is a bit of a weird installation. Now in order to use this add-on you have to be on Turbo Warp. You cannot do this on Scratch because this is an add-on. This doesn't work like uh, Scratch add-ons or anything. This is an add-on for Turbo Warp. Now also you can't use this on Turbo Warp Desktop and the reasoning for that is because it doesn't use Turbo Warp's built-in custom extension feature right here. It actually uses its own add-on system so it can uh, connect to the Game Jolt API properly. So in order to get it, we're going to have to go to this Game Jolt page by the user Lucas Studio TV. So in order to access it, you want to go here, but you actually need to get another extension. You want to want to go to the Chrome Web Store. And this is for the main method. There's actually a second method on here, which I will not be showing in this video because it is uh, worse compared to this method as you cannot package your games with it, meaning you can't use it in the games. You can code with it, but you can't use it in the actual game. You have to do this method for it to work. Now I will warn you guys, the add-on we're about to install to get this to work does not work on certain browsers. Like I know um, Opera doesn't allow it. The only one I know for sure allows you to use it is Chrome. Anyways, we're going to go to here and we're going to search up Tamper Monkey. Now this is a add-on right here. This add-on allows you to add user scripts that will edit uh, websites. Now, I already have this installed, but if you don't have it, it'll add a um, add to Chrome button here. Press that, press OK. Since it's a user-based thing, make sure to only install user scripts for Tamper Monkey from sources that you trust. Uh, of course, the Game Jolt um, API stuff. Uh, is from a trusted source. I've been using it. I know many people who have been using it. But if you're going to install anything other than this, make sure to verify that it's okay because you never know what you may be installing on the internet. Now, once you got Tamper Monkey installed, you're going to go back to the Game Jolt page for the API for Scratch add on. You go down to uh, this article right here. You're going to press Read Article and go to Way One using Plugin Loader UI. Now, we already have Tamper Monkey installed, so we're just going to go to, you can get the UI script here. I'm gonna press here and you will see this now it might be a different language for you if it's the wrong language just go ahead and switch it over to your language by pressing that button and here we are now you got to make sure press the puzzle piece got to make sure that tamper monkey has access to all sites for this so it can know that uh you have tamper monkey installed now when you have that you'll see this uh it says reinstall for me because i've had the add-on already uh but for you it might just be installed you're just gonna click the button we're going to uh, press reinstall, or for you, it'll just be install. Uh, we're going to go to uh, dashboard, and you can see the add on is installed plugin loader UI. So now we have the add on added to Chrome. So we're going to go over to Turbo Warp. We're going to open up a new, pro um, new blank project in Turbo Warp. Now you may notice something over here. Of course, I have some add ons on, but there is no plugins button. If you don't see it, make sure first of all, Tamper Monkey has access to the site. It can be for all sprites on turbo.org um, only. Just has to be something. If you check that, if it's still not installed, you just have to press refresh on Turbo Warp and it will show up this plugins button. Now, these three do not work at the moment. They may be updated in the future, but at the moment they do not work. Right here is the Game Jolt add-on, and right here is Utilities 2.0, and this is also made by the same creator. Uh, it's based off of uh, Sheep Testers Utilities uh, add-on, and it is also something I recommend you use. I'm gonna click onto Game Jolt, and here we go. It says right here, we have all of the blocks here. So, in order to use these blocks, you need to have a Game Jolt page. So, you're going to want to create a new page. We're just going to create a page. We're going to make it uh, devlog only. It doesn't really matter. Now, once you press save draft, you will see the, uh, the button over here, uh, Game API. 
Now here is where you're going to get the game API information. So, in order for any of this to work, you have to be connected to a session for any of this stuff, even uh, stuff that would seem like it doesn't need a, um, a session, you still have to be connected to a session uh, for it to work. Now in order for it to work, you have to go to API settings on your account. You'll have the game ID, which is also in the link. Uh, anyone can see it. We're just going to go over here, copy and paste it over to game ID. Now private token. Uh, make sure not to share the private token with anyone, because that allows anyone to connect uh, to a session with uh, to your game with their own programs. Uh, you can of course always generate a new key in case it would get leaked. So I'm going to be blurring it out even though this game page will be deleted by the time I finish this video and it's unlisted. I'm still going to blur it out just to be safe, you know? We're going to copy and paste the private token, put it right here, and then we're going to click it. And it may take a second, but now we are connected. Now I'm going to show you a bit more all here. So first of all, we have the fetch user data. So for example, we're going to go on to my account. So as you can see, I typed in my username here, click by username instead of ID. And now it's found all of my information that's publicly available on Game Jolt. So you can see here, now we can get the username and fetch. And you can see here about Gamer TV. We can do profile description. Yep, there's my profile description. Uh, my last time logged in was 25 minutes ago. Um, account creation date one year ago. Just a little simple stuff like that. You can also get uh, the profile picture pi profile picture data from this. So uh, me uh, requires it. Um, it will. So if you set it to me, it will um, use the data from uh, the user that's logged in. And if you fetch, it'll do it from here. So right now I just fetched my username uh, or my user data. I'm gonna click it. You can see it gave me a URL to my profile picture, and if we switch it to data Yuri, it'll take a bit longer, but we'll get this long list of stuff. And if you combine this with Utilities 2.0, which you can add on here, you can scroll down and get a set image. And you can put uh, this over to where it says Yuri, make sure it's set to data uh, URI. Uh, but to make it quality 400, just so you can see it better, I'm gonna press it, and boom! This is my profile picture. So you can also see this work for any user with the fetch thing. So if I set it to my friend uh, Zod's account, grab this fetch data, I'm gonna press it, and boom! That's uh, his profile picture right here. So next up is being able to log in to a Game Jolt account. This is what is required for you to be able to do trophies. Fetched does not work for the uh, for trophies or for scores. Uh, so we're gonna grab the login user with username block. We're going to type in the username. So here is my username, Airbot Gamer TV. And then a game token. You can access your game token. Again, this is just like the uh, the private ID from the game jewel page. Do not share this with anyone. Uh, you can just press game token here. And of course, you can change it if it were ever to get leaked. I'm going to, of course, be blurring it on the video. But we're going to copy that, paste it here, and we're going to click it. And I'm going to delete it so I don't have to blur for the rest of the video. And now if I press is locked in, it'll say true. And if I grab username and set it to me, you can see it is set to Airbot Guarantee. And for example, if I set it to Fetched, it's still William Jasper. But if I do me, it is Airbot Gamer TV because I am logged into Airbot Gamer TV. Now, for achieving trophies, you're going to grab the Achieve Trophy block. In order for this to work, you have to be connected to the uh, the session for the game page that the trophy is on and you have to be logged into the account that's going to be awarded with the trophy. Once you've gotten those steps done, you're going to grab this Achieve Trophy block. You're going to go over to Trophies on the Game Jolt page, and this is where you create a trophy. So you want to create a bronze trophy real quick. This is just going to be called Test. Uh, we have to make sure it's visible. A uh, secret just hides the description of it until you have achieved the trophy, just uh, to avoid spoilers in your game or whatever. 
I'm gonna press save trophy and you can see the trophy ID right here. Now this you can't actually easily copy and paste, you have to type it in normally. So I'm just gonna go back and forth and uh, type it in. So once you've typed in, again, probably best if you don't share this with anyone, so then they can't award themselves with the trophy with their own code. Anyways, I'm going to press achieve trophy. Now we're going to look at my notifications. You can see no notifications here. We're going to press the button. We're going to go over here. And you can see I just got awarded with the trophy test. And a uh, similar method for scores. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into this just because I'm not too familiar with them. But you can go over to scores, uh, grab the table IDs. And then we're going to add score with 100 with the text test. I'm gonna press this and if we go over to the score data and view scores you can see I just ranked number one with score 100 and we can also uh, do it with a guest username and get the proper data with this block and then when you want to log out you just press log out and when you want to close the session press close session of course, it auto does this when you go off of the game or go off the tab. And you can see, if I go to overview, you can see it recorded my session time and how many trophies I've been unlocked. So you can see one trophy was unlocked because I got one trophy. You can see there's one score because I got one store. Uh, data store sadly isn't available right now, but the add-on is still in beta. So hopefully in the future that'll be added. I'm hoping it will be added because data storage from Game Jolt account will be very good for games. In order for people to use this add-on in your game, so um, you can't use this add-on on Scratch. So you're probably like, how do I get people to use it if I can't use it on Scratch? How are people going to be able to use or be able to unlock trophies in my game? Well, there is an answer, and that is the Turbo Warp Packager. So you're going to go down to Turbo Warp Packager. We're going to wait for it to load assets. And if we scroll down, once it's finished loading, you can see a new plugins beta thing was added here. And it'll auto add in add-ons, uh, you can get rid of those. The only add-on we really need is GameJoel API, and that'll make it so it'll compile with the GameJoel API working properly. Put in the rest of the settings and then, you know, package, and then you can download the file. This isn't a full tutorial on how to use the Turbo Packager, that's just me showing you that it will show there. Now, if you're uploading from a file and it doesn't show up or other URL, uh, just switch it over to a uh, project ID and then press load project. And if it still doesn't show up, refresh the page. Eventually, it will show when you press load file. And that's basically going to be it for the tutorial, so I hope you learned something new from this. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, tutorial. I may do some more tutorials in the future, you never know. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.